Mai, I lead the distribution team at Pingana. Thank you for joining us for this webinar update with Sagi Ben Yosef and Gabi Dishi from Alpha Investors. They are the portfolio managers of the Pingana Alpha Israel Fund. From a format perspective, I've asked Sagi and Gabi to both keep their prepared sections reasonably short, so we should have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. So please, any questions that you have about the fund or the environment or the Israeli investment opportunity or any specific exposures, um, please enter them into the Q&A box that can be accessed from the icon on your screen. And hopefully we can have a really interesting conversation after the, prepare, the prepared remarks. Sagi, over to you. Uh, shalom and hi from Israel. Uh, thank you for taking the time today and uh, for the opportunity to present the Pangana Alpha Israel Fund. To those of you um, who don't know us, my name is Sagi Ben Yosef and I'm a managing partner at Alpha. I'm joined uh, today by the founder and chief investment officer of Alpha, Gabi Dishi. In the next half hour, as Adam said, Gabi and I will present the fund and we will try to make a convincing case for why we believe Israel possesses a lucrative investment opportunity. In the first part of the presentation, which will be mine, I will give a snapshot of the macroeconomic uh, key characteristics of the Israeli economy and the tech sector. Uh, and this will be followed by Gabi, who will elaborate on the fund structure, strategies, and the current positioning, and of course, a few examples of our portfolio holdings. Next slide, please. I would like just to start with a snapshot of the Israeli economy, which uh, is pointing out a few key factors and figures which give you a better understanding of the current state of Israel's economy. We are all as investors faced today with two major global concerns, the slowdown in economic growth and the rise of inflation. When looking globally today, we believe that Israel stands out as one of the places positioned to better overcome this challenging environment as it is backed by unique characteristics that support its continued growth. There are quite a few economic indicators in this slide in front of you uh, that reinforce that Israel is one of the strong economies in the OECD. Israel has a significantly higher GDP growth rate than the annual average in the OECD countries. The GDP growth was 8.2% in 2021, and we're expected to end 2022 at around 5.5%. And in light of time constraints, I will elaborate on just a few of the key indicators in the next few slides. So what makes Israel a lucrative investment opportunity? Israel is a small country, both in land size and population, a population of only 9.4 million people in a country that is approximately 0.3% of the size of your country, Australia. Its size, geography, and history form the unique hybrid, which one, on one hand, it is a developed and strong Western world economy, along with the characteristics of an emerging market. One of the key unique factors is Israel's demographic fundamentals. We talk about economic growth and global concerns today of the aging population in so many countries, especially in Europe. In this aspect, Israel definitely stands out. Israel has the highest natural fertility rate among the developed countries of the OECD. And in addition, we are a very young and growing population with a median age of 30 compared to 40 in the OECD countries. The Israeli economy is an export-oriented economy, and due to its size, the local market is too small, and for that reason, every Israeli company looks for growth globally. If you look today at the NASDAQ and other exchanges, you will be amazed to see that it's no wonder that 11% of the global unicorns companies are Israeli companies. The natural gas uh, uh, reservoirs is a game changer um, for Israel. The, this gas discovery has turned Israel to be energy sufficient and not relying on foreign gas resources. This is very significant, especially considering the Russia-Ukraine war and Europe's dependence on Russia's supply. And the Abraham Accords, which you probably all know and heard, which is a new era for Israel in this region. We signed the peace accords three years ago. Uh, we have diplomatic and economic relationships between Israel and the United Emirates countries, such as Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and it's just getting stronger and stronger. This is a significant driver for growth as new economic frontiers have opened up for Israel. And we're all experiencing a significant global correction in tech stocks in the last year, but we all know that technology is literally in every aspect of our lives 
and will continue to be a main driver of progress and innovation. In this aspect, Israel is with its technological fundamentals and DNA of innovation is very, very well positioned to continue to be a leader in global high tech, in the high tech scene. This is supported by the continued increase in direct foreign investments. Just to give you an understanding, in the last five years, we have seen significant growth of foreign entities investing in Israeli tech companies. The figure for 2021 was a record of 31 billion US dollars. But we believe that there are two main factors that are unique to Israel that will continue to be dramatically supportive of our tech leadership. The first and most important is the R&D expenditure. R&D expenditure is a key driver for any country, for any tech industry, and Israel is ranked number one in the world with an expenditure of 5% of its GDP. This is compared to 2.5% in the OECD countries and 3.1% in the US. Just to give you an understanding, Australia, the figure for Australia is less than 1%. The second factor is the presence of global R&D centers in Israel. We have more than 450 global corporations that have a local R&D presence in Israel, some through the acquisition of Israeli tech companies. Companies such as Intel, Microsoft, Cisco, IBM, and lately Apple and NVIDIA uh, chose Israel as the site uh, for this first and main development center outside of the US. This uh, created a unique tech scene and ecosystem of innovation that is only second to the Silicon Valley in the US. Next slide, please. Um, I'm just gonna conclude by part of the presentation just to give you a short reminder of who Alpha is and who we are. So Alpha was founded in 2005, and today we're one of the leading equity fund managers in Israel. The team is made up of founders and partners with extensive expertise. We specialize and focus solely on the Israeli capital market. Our assets currently are under management are 650 million USD. And our first fund, which is called Alpha Value, is one of the best performing equity funds in Israel since its inception in 2007. We're very uh, proud, and it's important to point out, that we are the only Israeli fund manager in Australia that jointly with our partner, Pengana, created a structure in the form of an Australian unit trust that offers access to direct investments in the Israeli capital market. Thank you, and I hand over to uh, my partner, Gavi. Um, so, uh, hi everyone, and great to meet you again, although I can't see you and I will always prefer a frontal meeting. Um, since we've got very limited time, and since I assume most of you already know us and uh, the fund strategy, I will go over uh, the fund strategy very quick, in, a, in a two or three minutes hopefully, and then I will move into our view of the current global macro challenges uh, although we are much more mid micro uh, investors. And I will end by describing some of our current positions and how we are uh, handling uh, with the crazy and volatile uh, market. Um, I will start by updating you that uh, there were no changing in the Alpha Investment Management Team. And we just moved uh, last month to our new office in Herzliya. And we will be very happy to host each one of you that intend to visit in uh, Israel. Um, so let's move to the fund strategy. Uh, the Pengana Alpha Fund is a long only fund uh, with the downside uh, uh, protection from big crisis in the markets. Uh, and actually we already saw two or even three uh, 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 crises considering the current one. Uh, that's in, and that's all in five in the last five years. I just, in December 18, uh, the first quarter of 2020, and the big question about today, uh, and I will elaborate on. Uh, the fund uses a unique portfolio construction that incorpor incorporates three different strategies in, uh, in a single fund, which are value, growth, and special situation. Uh, it is important to emphasize, and again, I will elaborate on later in the presentation, uh, that these strategies are uh, not implemented in equal way and uh, are determined uh, uh, based on the opportunities in the market at any point in time that uh, uh, we will find uh, 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 the right way. So quick uh, on each one, and then the strategies value mainly industrial companies with a distinct technological advantage. Most of them are listed in Israel. Uh, the growth strategy is mainly focused on companies with significant and exponential growth potential. 
Many of the growth companies are uh, much more high-tech companies that uh, uh, usually listed in the NASDAQ or duly listed in Israel and in the NASDAQ. Uh, uh, actually, this part is the one that hurt us a bit in, uh, 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 in the last year, and I will touch uh, 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 in a few minutes. Uh, the third strategy is a special situation. That's the smallest allocation in our portfolio, usually one or two investment in specific year. Um, in this strategy, we are usually investing in companies that uh, we were found some anomalies, but we don't want uh, to stay with them for the long term. And that's why we describe them as a special situation. But there are some other special situations and considering time, I won't touch it uh, too long. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so, so as you can see in the slide, um, we also have the policy of hedging our downside exposure, which we sometimes refer to as the, our fourth strategy. It is very important and unique strategy that people are always asking me about the strategy or in the middle of the crisis, and they just want to make sure that we are protected or complaining about it uh, or mainly about its cost after one or two years uh, of increasing the markets. That's the time to emphasize that the Pengana Alpha Fund is a long only fund and uh, this constant strategy protect us only in significant crisis, such a decline in the markets of more than 15% in a specific year. Um, as I mentioned before, that actually happens not only in December 18, it's also happened in the first quarter, as you can see here, of 2020. And the, as you can see here in the slide, uh, the fund was down, I'm talking about 2020, the first quarter, the fund was down uh, only 7.5%, while the market declined by 21%. Um, and actually, the small cap indices declined even more. Uh, we can also see that this strategy does not only protect the, uh, the value of the portfolio, but it also allows us to make investments when uh, equities are severely oversold and cheap. That's actually the reason, you, can, you can't see it here, but actually the reason for the outperformance of the fund in the all year of 2020, when the Tel Aviv stock exchange, Tel Aviv 125 stock exchange declined in 3%, while the fund were up 12 to 18%, depends on the class, whether it's USD or AUD. We believe that in today's constantly changing environment, implementing these different strategies uh, in one fund, allows our product to really deliver our best ideas and the best of what Alpha platform has to offer. We are unconstrained. We can be flexible and react very quick. Um, of course, it has some cost, and we paid about 2 to 2.5% every year on this protection. Um, next slide, please. So, so now we will move to our outlook on the markets, and then I'll go over on our specific uh, uh, portfolio. Uh, the year of 2022 seems as the year with one of the biggest realization in the death and stock market, yeah, I think in, in the whole world. The Israeli in the indices, especially the large cap uh, uh, indices, uh, is outperforming most of the world uh, indices, but we all know that um, uh, there are global macro influences and uh, it is too early to summarize and to know how it will end. The, just for the numbers, the Tel Aviv 125 since January 1st declined in about 7%, while the small cap index in Israel declined 23% and the Nasdaq dropped in about 30%. Um, as you can see here in the slide, the list of the problems are long and I assume that everyone knows them. Uh, they included the Russia-Ukraine war, the energy crisis in Europe, inflation in Europe, US and other places, and, and many more that I just want to describe. But I think that without any doubt, the most powerful, powerful one is the alternative which is the monetary uh, uh, re uh, reduction by the US Fed. This mon monetary reduction leads the increase in the yield around the, wo the world, strengthening the dollar and export inflation to the whole world. 
there are many questions whether the Fed is wrong or not, and uh, if it's not too fast or too aggressive and might slow down the economy. But I believe that none of us have the answers, and we will know probably in the next two years. And there is, but there is no doubt uh, uh, that the very low interest rate that we uh, saw in the last few years had its own problems, such the increase in the uh, house pricing. I will summarize by saying that uh, we do not believe that it is all behind us. Uh, and uh, we are an equity investors. The ones that meet us uh, in our last visit in Australia, in, I think it was in, on my, uh, have heard the, the same things about our concerns. Uh, uh, the big, it starts by the alternatives. But that's exactly the opportunity uh, that we have uh, with the flexibility of the three or four strategies that uh, uh, we can use at the same time. Uh, actually, same as it was during uh, uh, 2020, uh, uh, during COVID. Our assumption when we are managing the portfolio is that the world will continue to struggle with the inflation uh, until mid-2023, but uh, I, I, I can't sign on it. But meanwhile, in Israel, we still have a lower inflation compared to the US and, uh, uh, and Europe. Um, when we are looking on the real estate in Israel, uh, especially on the residents, despite the huge decline of about 28% in real estate index, in the public companies, of course, but we didn't sell it actually in the housing price. Um, we are still thinking that uh, most of them are too leveraged and uh, in risk. I'm talking about the uh, public markets, of course, in the, in the real estate uh, sector. That's exactly the places we are monitoring now to find the most attractive, not leveraged companies when they uh, will be cheap enough. Unfortunately, in our current, our current holdings cause us some of the loss this year, since all the residents share price decline, but we believe that uh, we hold the ones that are not that leveraged and that will stay stronger when dust will settle. Uh, it, will, it, it will take time, of course. Another place that uh, we lost money uh, this year was the semiconductors. Uh, we spoke about the many semiconductors sector so many times. Our main holding in that sector is through a duly listed company by the name of Comtech, but sometimes we, uh, we have some more companies in that sector. Despite the fact that their financials were amazing actually till now, uh, uh, and their forecasts are still good, we can see that the whole sector dropped in about 50% uh, uh, since January 1st, and Comtech wasn't different. We believe that uh, the sector is cyclical, and uh, they might have some worse here or worse year next, next year compared to the last year. But yet we increased our holding, I think just in the last few weeks uh, 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 because we are looking for the mid and the long-term and I think that it will uh, work. Uh, actually, we, re we the share price dropped and we bought more and returned the percentage in the fund uh, uh, as it was previous. On the other hand, uh, and it's important to emphasize, a great place to be in Israel and one of our best uh, holding this year is the gas companies that Segi just described that benefited a lot in the last year. Um, the, the sector was up in Israel in double digit numbers, high double digit numbers. Uh, it is much more than being self-efficient, although for the country of Israel, it's very important, but due to our limited time, I will elaborate on that issue on another time. Um, another place that uh, I want to, to, to talk about and we benefited a lot from it was uh, uh, the security sector uh, in the company that I have been present uh, in my previous presentations and probably part of you know the names and the name is FMS. The company is listing, li listing only in the Israeli stock exchange uh, and the market cap is about 1 billion uh, uh, shekels, uh, which is about 
285 million US. The share price went up this year in 24% due to their great results. Um, part of them, of course, are due to the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, but not all of them. The company, for those who didn't hear us, uh, uh, heard us uh, before spoke about it, uh, design and produce a bulletproof vest. To summarize, uh, we believe that uh, we can uh, start find some great opportunities to the midterm, uh, which is midterm is usually two or three years, mainly in companies that uh, have some competitive edge and are very efficient uh, and not leveraged due to the interest rate. In sectors such as the semiconductors, the gas companies, and the cybersecurity, and we'll, I will elaborate on. Um, we can also find some opportunities in the field of medical distribution in Israel and the electronic, which sometimes people confusing it with the uh, a, a pure technology, it's not usually the same. Um, next slide, slide, please. So about our current positioning in the fund, we are holding about 12% in cash, but our net exposure, as you can see here, is much lower because of the put options that protect us uh, from decline. So our net exposure is 66%. Um, about, I'll summarize it in a different way, maybe, uh, about 58% of our portfolio invested in companies that are listed only in the Israeli stock exchange, and about 18% are duly listed and 13% more or less are listed in the, uh, in the NASDAQ. Um, this year, despite the sharp decline uh, uh, in the markets around the world, we have not yet benefited from our downside protection since the main put options we bought are on the local index, which is the Tel Aviv 125, that uh, has not fallen over 15%, it's just a, a decline in about 7%. On the other hand, we were uh, 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 being hurt uh, um, by the decline of the Israeli companies that we, are, we, that we hold and are listed on the NASDAQ. But since we are uh, uh, protected on this part through the uh, uh, put options on the uh, NASDAQ because of the uh, correlation, this uh, uh, moderated the losses and uh, uh, this is one of the reasons of the access return GC, although we are long only fine. Um, on the other hand, uh, our put option, as I mentioned, didn't, uh, uh, I think today are a bit different than usual. Uh, they are for shorter term than usual. Usually it's uh, about 12 months. Now it's a shorter term and it's protect about 40% of our uh, portfolio. The main reason for the shorter term is that they are just much more close to the money now. So, so that's, uh, that's why we hold it like this. Um, next slide, please. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll go quick on two uh, uh, examples that we describe, I think, in our monthly letter. Um, InMode is the first one. Um, InMode uh, operates in the field of medical device and develops advanced devices in the medical aesthetic segment based on RF technology um, uh, for the treatment of uh, skin uh, blemishes. Our current holding in InMode in the fund is about 3%. Uh, the main entrepreneur is Moshe Mizrahi, which is uh, well known in the area and the, the few big exits in, uh, in the same sector. The company revenues are divided to capital sales, along with recurring revenue, which is very important for this company. Uh, the company's uh, uh, products are characterized by high profit margin, while at the same time generating significant value to, the, uh, uh, to their customers with a high return on investment. It traded uh, at a market value of about 2.4 billion US with a net cash of 400 million US. The company is listed, listed only in the NASDAQ. Uh, the company is traded in a EV to EBITDA of about 11 for the forecast of 2023. And it's expected to continue to grow at a solid double digit rate uh, in the coming few years. The share price dropped from 90% to 
uh, from ninety dollar to 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 thirty dollar actually, uh, and actually thirty dollars that's our buying price. I think that Inwood is a great example for the great a great company that most of the time was too expensive for us, especially last year. Uh, but we follow the company, we know the company uh, very well. And the correction in the market actually gave us the opportunity to buy it in a good price. Um, next slide, please. Um, my last example will be Checkpoint. Um, Checkpoint is one of the leading cybersecurity companies and the company I think with the larger market cap for sure in our portfolio, but I think one of the larger from the Israeli companies as well. Um, as I mentioned before, we believe that the cybersecurity market is facing a long growth ahead, especially as the whole world is dealing with the increased amount of employees that want to work from home. Uh, and that's even before, I don't want to get into too many data in this uh, issue, but that's before we understand the influence of Russia and probably, the, probably we assume that we'll increase the cyber attack in the future. The, the main problems uh, of the CISOs of their organizations uh, is the connectivity between the all cyber solutions. There are so many cyber solutions. And Checkpoint addresses the, uh, the problem uh, uh, of companies having trouble to coordinate between uh, multiple cyber vendors uh, in, uh, in the organization with a high gross profit, very high gross profit, and an EBIT of 40%, uh, market cap of 14 billion US, as I mentioned, one of the biggest, uh, and, and net cash of 3.7 million US, which means that not just not leverage, they've got a lot of cash. Uh, the company is traded in a free cash flow uh, to EBITDA of 10. The main problem actually uh, of Checkpoint during the last few years, was actually uh, 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 those kind of things. It was actually their conservatism. Um, while their competitors were growing organically and unorganically, uh, they were growing only in three to 4% year to year without any big acquisitions. Uh, that started to change in the last year. Uh, we can see growing uh, of about 6%. And hopefully uh, uh, more in the coming years, uh, a, a part of them by uh, 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 unorganically and, and part organically. Uh, are, we believe they're in a, in a very good spot now in the cybersecurity area. Um, they're answering the big problems and questions in that segment. We believe the checkpoint will continue to be dominate player in the growing global cyber sector and uh, feel very good in, uh, with this solving. Um, that's, that's, I'll, I, I can, we can I think move to the Q and A. Thank you, gentlemen. That wasn't quite as brief as we had hoped, but we still do have time for questions. Um, looking at the questions that have come through so far, um, they seem to largely fall within two buckets, either Israel and the markets or the fund and the investments. So I'm going to try and group them accordingly. Um, but if you have any further questions, just ask them and I will, I'll try to fit them in as we go across. Um, so, Sagi, I think the first question here is probably for you. Um, your investment thesis seems to be largely based on Israel being a favorable investment des destination. You spoke about um, it being business friendly, political improvements, etc. cetera. Um, what are the risks? What can derail this? Um, I think, obviously, this is, uh, we're talking about a global world and obviously we're not isolated. Uh, although the economy is strong, uh, we totally depend or we truly depend on, on, on export. We are an export-oriented economy, as we mentioned. And I think that uh, if the world will go into a severe recession, uh, which some of the analysts are forecasting, uh, then obviously uh, the figures and numbers that we have shown here um, will be different. So, um, yeah, I think um, a global recession is probably the main uh, issue of concern. Okay, 
Fair enough. Um, but Israel has held up better than most of the markets that we have seen, most of the global peers um, so far. Um, and I guess puts will, will help as well in that case. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we are always, you know, uh, implementing the, uh, the strategy of uh, downside protection. And um, if in case of, um, of a correction in the market, a continued correction in the market, then we're obviously protected, as Gabi described uh, very well in the, um, in, in the, um, the definition of the strategy. Okay, makes sense. Um, next question, you spoke about a scale-up nation, so moving from a startup nation to, to a scale-up nation, um, but growth around the world is slowing as banks are, are raising interest rates to, to address inflation um, and scaling costs money. So how is the Israeli economy impacted by the, the rising rates? Um, I'll, 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 I'll try to answer. Um, so first, I will start by saying about ourselves uh, that uh, most of our portfolio, as you saw in the two examples, but as you can see, uh, read in our monthly letters, are companies that are not leveraged. So uh, uh, so it won't influence on them that significant. But uh, answering uh, uh, on your question about the, uh, uh, how it's going to influence about Israel, so I think that there is no doubt that we are in a different game after so many years of zero interest rate, and it will influence on many things. Um, I believe that the sectors that uh, uh, are going to be much more sensitive is the real estate, mainly since it is very leveraged and other sectors. Uh, but I'm uh, uh, um, at, at least in Israel, I can't see much more than that uh, uh, because we still have some uh, a growth engines. And keeping with with the real estate for a moment, you spoke about taking losses in the portfolio on the real estate sector, um, but seeing opportunities with the less leveraged companies. Have you been adding to those positions? Have you been adding capital? So, so as as, as you can understand from our uh, strategies, uh, um, the fund have is actually three different strategies with downside protection. Of course, uh, we had. As you can all see in our monthly letters, we had a big exposure to technology. I think uh, uh, if you will see, uh, if you look on the, the portfolio, uh, uh, I think 18 months ago. Uh, but due to the valuations, because we are very sensitive to valuations, we we change it and we moved a bit. And you can see, uh, unfortunately, part of them, we, we lost money like the, the real estate, but we, we also get to other segments like the uh, uh, gas uh, exploration and earn money. Uh, so it is important to emphasize that uh, uh, the word technology is a bit tricky here, and uh, we are mainly focused on profitable companies, although also the technology companies that I just mentioned here, they are profitable ones, and we are very sensitive to valuations at, at, the, end, at the end of the day, at, for the long run, that's the, that's the most important thing. So your exposure of 20% in technology, that is um, sort of the high technology and, and you believe that there is sort of um, other technology sectors that aren't captured in, in that definition? So, 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 so first, as I said, the, the, the world technology is very wide. So there, there are some other companies in the field of like uh, electronic that are not sometimes defined as pure technology. Uh, and uh, there's a great example of company by the name of SolarEdge, which is a renewable energy, but there are technology companies. So, so it's all in a matter of definitions. Uh, the main question is whether they have some cutting edge technology in their business, if they have a great uh, gross, a, a high gross margin. And for our, from our point of view, if whether they are profitable or not. Okay, makes sense. Um... Turning to stocks for a minute, in different markets, banks seem to react differently to increasing rates. Um, and the fund does have quite a bit of exposure to financials. So how have and do you expect Israeli banks to fare in a, in a rising rate environment? 
So I think it's a big question and we need to uh, uh, divide it into two parts. First is the share prices and second is the real businesses. Okay, because the, the Israeli bank is in a very good positioning now, a uh, very good one. Um, they are uh, doing, uh, uh, they are growing, uh, they are uh, doing a great returns. Uh, uh, not just the share price, I'm talking about the, uh, the business itself. Um, and actually, they should earn a lot from the increase in, in, in the interest rate. But uh, uh, as, as one that's doing the same job for the last 23 years, I can tell you something. Although they, they prob probably going to be much more profitable in, uh, due to the uh, interest rate now, uh, the share prices might decline at that segment. So that's a question of looking for the long term or not. Um, we are usually uh, invested. First, I must, I must say that when we are talking about financial, it's not only banks, but um, but uh, uh, talking about the banks, uh, usually we will hold between zero to ten percent in the fund. Usually, it all depends on our assumptions whether the uh, the results gonna be gonna be improved and the share price gonna 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 uh, uh, be up because for the share price, it's not good. Uh, uh, a high rate uh, in increasing the high rates, but for their business, for their business, it's very, very good and important. So, is this a sector that we could expect to see increased allocations going forward? I, 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 I'll tell you something. Um, the sector is uh, a, a not expensive, but again, that's uh, that's not enough for us. So, you will see that we are holding it because they are generating us about uh, uh, the, the bank doing about a, a nine or 10% uh, uh, return every year. So uh, on the capital, uh, so, so we feel that it's com comfortable enough to hold it now, but it's not a strategic investment. Okay, it's not like in model check on the just described, we believe that the business, we should be with the business for the long term. The, here it's, 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 much, it's much more uh, a difficult uh, question. Okay. Um, the last question is, um, you guys are, um, well, are, how active are you as shareholders? Do you vote your shares? Do you engage with the companies or do you simply buy the companies that you like? So I'll, 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 I'll tell you something. We, we are not publishing it, but it, it was published actually in Calcalist, one of the biggest uh, uh, newspaper, uh, economic newspaper in Israel. Um, we are not an active, uh, an active uh, uh, fund. We are usually going to companies with the company, but it just is, uh, uh, published, I think, a week ago or two weeks ago, uh, that Alpha leads uh, um, like uh, something uh, with the board of directors of the company that I think I mentioned it in the presentation, FMS. Uh, uh, I didn't mention it, but we are leading. Um, um, it's not a recession, but the company uh, market cap is 285 million US. They are earning 22 million US every year, but they have about 85 net million US net cash. We are just dealing now with the management team. Uh, we didn't uh, allow them to do some things in the company until they will distribute us dividends and do some other action to. Uh, uh, the reason for that is that whenever there are crises in the market, you want to go to your companies that are good companies and you can, uh, I'm not sure that I know the right word here, but to, uh, uh, to get your returns earlier, okay? By distribute, if they will distribute it as 30, 35% dividend, one-time dividend now, then I, I believe that it will influence on the share price significantly and we want to do it earlier than usual. So, so basically what you're saying is when the, the issue is sufficiently important, you'll engage, but um, otherwise you'll tend not to. There, 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 there are two uh, reasons. First is the one that you said, and that's what's happening in FMS. And sometimes it might happen when you have some problems with your assumptions and you need and you need to 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 take actions because you want to uh, because uh, you were wrong. But actually, for our uh, uh, lucky for us, it, it, it didn't happen there.
I think it's all in this fight. Okay, well, um, thank you. That's that's all the questions that we received. Um, thank you to everyone for for joining us on this webinar, and thanks to to all those who did ask questions. That I think those were excellent questions. Um, our next webinar in the series is nine a.m. on the twenty seventh of October with Bradley Amoyles, um, the portfolio manager of the Axiom International Ethical Funds. I say funds because we have both a hedged and un hedged version. You can register for this webinar on our website, pengana.com. If you have any other questions, please get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much and enjoy your evening.